Good morning, good morning guys. I'm Elle, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my new home office and I am so pleased with the results. I cannot wait to share it with you guys. It's kind of timely that I decided to redo my office because I also decided to start this second channel. And so it felt like the perfect time to kind of switch up the office and have the office reflect me a little bit more. Now, those of you who have watched my vlog channel for a while, you will have known that I redid this office a few years ago and I actually hired an interior decorator. I love Tiffany. I think she's super, super talented. And I do love what she did with the room. As time went on, it didn't feel totally me. And this just goes to show that when you're making a space over, you don't always have to spend a ton of money. You don't always have to outsource your design aesthetic to somebody else like a designer. Trusting in your intuition, taking the time to really think mindfully about the color scheme and the fabrics and the textures and the furniture will pay dividends in the long run. I wish I had taken the money and spent a little bit more time thinking about what is the right office for me. I think I would have saved more time and hassle and been happier with the results in the long run. That's what I did this time around. I really trusted in my intuition, trusted in my own aesthetic and design sense, and I am so happy with the results. So the first thing I did was decided to take all the Ikea furniture out of the office and I ended up selling it on Facebook Marketplace. This is something I did in my recent pantry video, which if you guys missed, I will have it linked down below. But selling furniture when you're doing over a room is a really great way to cut costs. I ended up saving you know, half of the entire budget for renovating the room by just selling stuff on Facebook Marketplace. I would say that as long as you have really good pictures, good descriptions, and your stuff is in good condition, you can get really good value for your items that otherwise you would just be giving to friends or donating. And listen, if you're not in the space where you need the extra money, then donating to friends or donating to other people in need is a really, really great cost. But if you're in a season of life where you're trying to save money and you're trying to cut costs where you can, it's a really effective tool. The next thing I did was to take down the wallpaper that I had. It was vinyl wallpaper, which I was promised meant that it would not damage the walls. Very excitedly, I started peeling back that vinyl wallpaper, and that's when I discovered that indeed, it was damaging the walls. In fact, it was damaging the walls quite a bit. Some areas were peeling up just a little bit of the paint, other areas were actually taking away some of the wall. I knew I was in trouble, but I didn't know how to fix it. I already knew that I was kind of in too deep, so I thought, okay, this is either gonna turn into a DIY or some sort of situation, but I knew that at this point I had already committed. So I decided to take all the wallpaper off and just trust the process. Trust the design process. So by the time I was done ripping the wallpaper off, this is what my walls looked like. Not good. So I called my friend Danny Berger from Diaries of DIY Danny and I said, girl, you gotta help me out. What am I supposed to do? So she ended up telling me three coats of primer and two coats of paint. You could kind of tell as you were doing the coats of primer that you were rebuilding that wall. If you were going to be having this wall just have straight paint on it for long term, then you'd have to call in a, a renovation person and have them like re-spackle the wall. But because I knew I was gonna be putting another texture on the back wall, I knew it was okay for it to have some inconsistencies. Then it was time to choose the right wallpaper. I am so happy with what I ended up picking. I ended up going to Urban Walls. Now, I had never heard of Urban Walls. I think I randomly found them on Instagram. I don't even remember exactly how I found them, but they do wall decals. They do traditional wallpaper as well, I believe, but what I really like about their decals is you can custom design it. They come in these giant sheets that you can then cut up and lay on your wall in a custom way. So you can decide how far apart each piece is, how close together it is, um, how much negative space you have in between each piece. You're kind of custom designing the wallpaper as you go. And because it's a decal, it stays on the wall. I've had this up for a good six weeks now and I haven't had any issues, but it actually will come off one day without damaging your walls, which is really great. They have so many different designs depending on what your design aesthetic is. Their color schemes are really beautiful. And what I really liked was that as you were kind of taping things on the wall with your painter's tape, you could step back and look at your design and alter as you needed to. So I felt really confident putting this one up that it was going to have the perfect um, design aesthetic by the end of it. 
Whereas with the wallpaper before, I think I had tried to install it myself and it didn't go well and then I ended up hiring someone to come in and install the wallpaper. I was able to do the Urban Walls design myself. It was super, super easy. Just as easy as they say in their instruction videos. So Urban Wall was actually gracious enough to donate this wall deco for my office and I am so grateful to them for sending that to me. I'm gonna have them linked in the description box below. You guys need to check them out. I'm actually gonna be using them in an upcoming family room renovation over at someone else's house. It's gonna be one of my first times making over someone else's space and I'm really excited about that. So you guys make sure you're subscribed so you stay tuned for that video. I've been working a lot with watercolors and ceramics lately and I just kind of love the whimsical artistic vibe of this wall. It really, really suits my personality. Even when I was designing my old office, we ended up kind of settling on that wallpaper and the previous wallpaper never felt totally right to me. It was okay, but it never felt totally right to me. This feels totally right. So the next thing was to pick the right desk. Now I had a big white desk from Ikea which suited my purpose but as I have become more and more of a minimalist I found that there were so many drawers in that Ikea office that were just empty and I just wasn't using and I didn't need that much desk space anymore. So I ended up getting this beautiful desk sent to me from Article. I am so happy with it. Article has quickly become my go-to place for home furnishings. I really do feel like furniture isn't made how it used to be. Some stuff you can get at Ikea and the quality I think is just fine, but if, if you don't wanna shop at Ikea or if there isn't anything at Ikea that meets your needs, it's really hard to get quality furniture nowadays. A lot of stuff is just made really cheap. We live in a disposable society right now and it's, it's really a shame to see. And so it's really refreshing to see a company like Article that's putting the quality back in furniture and in design. They have a beautiful mid-century modern feel to all of their pieces. A lot of their pieces come in different fabrics and color tones depending on your home aesthetic. Another thing I love about Article is that they deliver everything to you and the delivery people will set it all up for you and take the garbage with them when they go. I think that's an incredible service. My desk is solid wood. It's incredibly made, which means that it's something that I can have for decades and then can pass down to my kids one day, especially in this new season that I am in, hopefully for the rest of my life, where I'm being more intentional and mindful about the pieces that I'm bringing into my home. And I'm really asking myself, is this a piece that I'm going to live with forever? I'm really, really happy with the pieces that Article supplied me because I know these are pieces that are going to be in my family for generations to come. Two other pieces that I think really brought my home office together are my area rug and my floor light, both of which were sent by Article as well. The floor light has a beautiful brass feel. It's got a little bit of an industrial edge to it, but it still speaks to the kind of minimal sleek lines that I like in home design, as well as a little bit of a Scandinavian feel. The rug really brings in the huga, which is that sense of comfort and coziness and the high pile of the rug, as well as kind of the multicolored texture within the high pile, really brings that comfort and that huga that I love in home design. On my desk, I decided to style it with some of my favorite books. So I have Clean My Space, which is a book that one of my best friends, Melissa Maker, wrote. I have my all-time favorite book, which is Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. And then I also have a copy of Wuthering Heights, as well as a copy of Pilgrim's Progress, both of those two books I actually uh, thrifted way back in the day. I think before Dan and I were even married, I thrifted those books and those were such good finds. And then the top uh, book that I turned into a little bit of a faux planter was actually one of the centerpieces at Dan and my wedding. I took a bunch of thrifted books and I cut them out and I ended up planting them with actual succulents. I since then have replaced it with a fake succulent for my office but it's a nice way that I have kind of reused items that we had for our wedding and repurposed them in my home office. Two other kind of design elements that I have are two ceramic pieces that I actually made. I have fallen in love with ceramics lately. I've been taking some ceramics classes. I've been doing ceramics almost every day. I book studio time multiple times a week. I kind of get my hands in clay as often as possible right now. I don't know what has sparked this like flourishing love of ceramics for me, but it's alive. It is alive and well, and I would love at some point to start my own ceramics 
studio and sell pieces. I would love to partner with a charity and have a large portion of the proceeds from all the sales go to a charity. I'm thinking instead of doing a traditional merch line, eventually I'll come up with a ceramics line. This is one of the pieces that I have been kind of working on as a prototype. I have two pen holders, two different designs of pen holders that I have made. One of which is holding my everyday pens, my scissors, my whiteout, and then my other one is holding my colored markers that I use for my agenda. And I kind of really like the design of that one. You guys let me know if I should be making more of those and if I should be selling them. You'll see that the one that I have on my desk is actually cracked. That was just a prototype. I was using cheap clay from the dollar store just to kind of get the shape right. I've since done it in a higher quality ceramic. You guys let me know if that's something you would purchase if I made a little bit more of them. One other thing that I'll mention about this desk that I love is I love the storage. It's the right amount of storage. It's not too many drawers, too many cubbies that you end up just shoving a bunch of crap, but it's enough that you can store all the things that you need for a home office. The other corner of my office is my art corner. Again, because I'm working so much with watercolors right now, as well as ceramics, I've got all the tools that I need when I'm doing my daily art. I try and do 20 minutes of watercolor a day and then ceramics a few times a week. And so this is where I store all my arts and crafts stuff so that the kids don't get into it and ruin it because they have their own arts and crafts. are actually the same window coverings that I had in my previous office. They just came from Ikea, as well as the curtain rods is the original one that I had. It's working just fine. It filters the light in so that when I am shooting videos in here, you do get a little bit of that filtered light. I get asked a lot what the color is in my home, Benjamin Moore Oxford White. So now that I've shown you all the little bits and pieces of my office, this is the final reveal. <laughs> what your favorite part is. I would love to read those comments. Yeah, it just feels really timely that I have my new channel, kind of a fresh start and a fresh home office to help keep me inspired and organized so that I can continue to make great content for you guys. I have a super exciting content calendar for all of March. All the videos on my vlog channel and this channel are so good. I'm so excited to share it with you guys. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of those videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.